All right, gents, let's now switch gears. And now we know that the final four teams in the World Cup are Croatia, Argentina, Morocco, and France. Let's rank the final four teams, right? Like, who's going to win it all? Um, let's start with kind of in order of when they qualified. So let's go for Croatia first. Um, Nick, I'm going to come to you. Obviously, the penalty kick wins um, back to back, go 420 minutes. Do you think that's going to impact them in their semi final against Argentina, or is it just kind of that experienced midfield trio they have just really running the show for them? And they almost seem like they're not bothered by these crazy, tense, intense games and situations. They're just running it, and they're such a tournament hardened team, aren't they? So, Croatia, where, where, where do we see them going? Obviously, Argentina's tough, right? They're the underdogs. Yeah, you know, but they're also a, a team that strikes me as um, the equivalent of like the 45-year-old guy in every sitcom you've ever watched, the dad who's like, same old bleep, different day. Like, I, I think they're ready. They're ready for anything at any time. And absolutely anything could happen. And um, I'm really glad that this isn't a, although sure, of course, it could have been uh, tremendous entertainment, but Croatia-Morocco is would have been just the most tense fight ever. And so I'm glad they're on different sides and we can have two underdog stories. So I would say everything we said about Morocco, except with a World Cup final experience already under their belt. And would you bet against that, even with Messi on the other Mm -hmm. side? Um, I mean, I would bet for Messi, as you guys know, but I wouldn't bet against Croatia if that makes sense. Yeah, Andy, Croatia, again, just surprised us. Every single tournament, go further than we ever think they're going to go. Um, Vardy Ol's been excellent defensively. Also, Livakovic, the goalkeeper's having an amazing tournament. And just, yeah, so many unexpected heroes, I guess, for Croatia and young younger people stepping up. But Modric, Kovacic and um, Brozovic in midfield have just been sensational, right? Just clicking through the gears. So is that where Croatia's hopes lie, uh, if they are going to go all the way? Yeah, it has to. I I almost don't see a way, and, and, and it, obviously the talent is there and, and we know the names, but I almost don't see a way for them through the semifinals without also going to extra time, without also going to penalties. Uh, but yeah. And I mean it because they have scored more than one goal at this tournament one time. Do you think they're going to keep a clean sheet against Messi in the form that he is in and the way that Argentina team is starting to, to you know take over just a little bit more and grow in confidence as the tournament has gone on? I don't think they can. So they're going to need to score at least once. I, you know, it. the only time they scored more than once was, again, by the way, against Canada, four of them. I, I don't, I find it really difficult to imagine them scoring twice against Argentina. So they almost have to do it that way. Um, and I think that's why they've done it that way thus far is they simply don't have the Mario Mandzukic of yesteryear that they could count on for a big goal in a big moment or to just uh, not even create, but force a scoring chance out of sheer will out of nothing. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Probably very similar to their game against Brazil, right? Um, the semi final, they're trying to sit back try and take the pressure off, keep the ball a little bit and launch a few counters, whip some crosses into the box and see what happens. So they've got a they've got a blueprint there to follow. For Argentina, Nick, obviously Messi, it seems like this is his date with destiny, right? The way it's all falling into place, some shocks. Um, been pretty kind to them, the bracket, to get through to this round. Uh, a huge relief, though, to get past the Netherlands. So I don't know if that's going to scare Argentina. Maybe they'll think, oh, we, we aren't as good as... Uh, we think we thought we were and, you know, we nearly cracked under the pressure there. Or is that going to that huge relief going to give them renewed confidence and a bit of a boost? To say, OK, we can't mess it up again this time. That was our our big kind of warning in the knockout rounds. But uh, they showed real quality when they needed to uh, in the final third to go 2-0 ahead in that game. And then it was kind of a freak, right? The way that the Netherlands just chucked two big guys forward, um, caused absolute chaos. But in Argentina, to, to their huge credit, they were much better in extra time. They recovered. They probably should have won it in extra time, right, before it went to penalty kicks against the Netherlands. So um, are, they, are they the favourites right now to win the World Cup? Yeah, I think anybody who's involved with a soccer team, and you guys talked about this, I'm sure, yesterday, the minute that the Netherlands scored their second goal, immediately grabbed a notebook. I was like, tell the coach about that penalty. Don't let them forget that free kick routine. Um, There's been a lot of smarts there uh, that they've had to overcome. And by smarts, I don't mean intelligence. I mean like, ooh, that's smarts, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think they're the favorite. But I think they are... There, every team left here has been galvanized in some way or another. 
And the way that, look, it was both Argentina and the Netherlands in those penalties. But when you see Lionel Messi, who is usually pretty composed, caught on camera calling somebody an idiot, <laughs> you know that they got their dander up, right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. I think the best thing that could happen for them, and Andy has kind of hinted about this a little bit at, at one of the reasons they've struggled to score goals, is Martinez getting that penalty. Uh, I'm sorry, Lautaro Martinez getting that penalty. Because if he can find the form we've so often seen at Inter Milan, um, then maybe they are the favorite. But right now, the way things are going, it still feels a lot like messy and let's see what else happens. And Andy, the other Martinez, obviously, uh, Emmy Martinez, um, he came up big in the shootout. And that's huge as well, I think, for confidence defensively. Because that was knocked a little bit when we saw Lissandro Martinez, another Martinez, um, uh, when... <laughs> Obviously, yeah. that onslaught by the Dutch and he was caught out and there was question marks about the defending late on um, that led to the Dutch coming back. So, yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how they kind of approach the game against Croatia and more so how Croatia approaches them. Do they go more direct against uh, Argentina? So uh, yeah. but Argentina as a team individually, it's got to be right out there with, with France, right, as the favourites. <sighs> Yeah, I, I think I'm with Nick that they're not quite the favorites, but I do think that in a head-to-head, -head, um, I think they pose a very, very difficult challenge for France, and not to like jump ahead and look ahead to potential finals matchups, but I think the way that they are so steely in central midfield, I think will be a real problem for France to play through. There will be a lot of thorns uh, in the bush of midfield that is midfield as they try to play through Argentina, not quite so, so much as it was uh, against England, and so um they're neck and neck i think and and we yeah. have seen nick's right all of these teams have have been through a fire or two so far at this tournament already and they've come out the other side and proven themselves and they all have a goalkeeper who is incredible of are uh, uh, capable of the most incredible performance on any day and how many times has that been the story in a major semi-final champions league world cup euros whatever or a final it almost always seems to happen so i'm excited to see which one of those four is going to walk away from this this tournament at the world cup and be kind of you know the the, the goalkeeping hero talking about heroes morocco's players are already heroes get into the semi-finals first african team to do that in the history of the world cup so they're already playing with house money, right? They No one expects anything of them against France. But this sensational run to the semi-final, Nick, I mean, four shutouts in five games, so hard to play against, working great as a team unit. I mean, are Morocco the, the rank outsiders here or do we think they can upset France? Well, I kind of want to look to Sevilla for a second and think about that guy up top that scored today and that guy at the back who made all those saves. This Morocco team is a bunch of, Really, really, really good, but unsung players from good teams, right? I mean, they're sung about in some capacity, but Mizrahi at Ajax is not their star star. Yeah. And um, well, I'm just totally blanking now. Uh, you mentioned uh, Amrabat. I was almost going to call him Nordin you know, of the of the oh, Amrabat yeah. uh, legacy, yeah. Yeah. you know, that we saw. But yeah, they, they, they're all star. Even even Ziyech now, right? Like every player who starts for them is on a, a pretty darn good team and is a very good player, but isn't the guy. And so maybe that's why they play so well as a team. Yeah, yeah. Is they're used to it not being about them, but also knowing it's kind of about me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So if we go and rank the favorites then, we've talked about three teams. We'll probably go Morocco four, Croatia three, Argentina two, and then we're all leaning towards, right, Andy, France being the favorites. The reigning champs, I mean, they're going yeah. for history. Only two teams in the history of the World Cup, have gone back to back and defended their tri trophy. And it hasn't happened for a very long time. So we think they can do it, right? I mean, Mbappe against England was kind yeah. of locked down, but then Giroud came up. Griezmann, I thought, was excellent in that playmaking role, just popping up. And yeah. then Bele was, it was useful as well. Just defensively, I have a few concerns about France, and they were a little bit shaky uh, throughout this tournament. Uh, haven't mm -hmm. kept a clean sheet yet, right? So... Um, if they can improve that, though, and the midfield seems to be improving most games and doing better than we all thought, given the star names they're missing, um, it's kind of Francis to lose, right? Do you feel like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Chumani and, and Rabio have taken them a lot farther than I thought that duo could do in, in yeah. midfield. And, and that is proven. I, I think at this point I'm ready to concede. 
had that one wrong. And, and that is a, a midfield that can obviously take you to a World Cup semifinal um, and can probably take you on into a final and win it as well, uh, just given the contributions of each of, the, of each of those players in the game against England. Obviously, the goal for Chalmany um, and, and Rabio really, really solid defensive performance that we are just not used to seeing from him. And, and that kind of evolution and growth from him, I think, does just ever so slightly push them above Argentina and make them the favorites. But at the end of the day, all we're talking about here is a likelihood that a team wins the World Cup and the uh, the percentage likelihood of a France doing it over Argentina or Croatia or Morocco. It's a lot smaller than I think a lot of people think. And just because Morocco is ranked four, it does not mean they are miles behind France if they are the favorites. And so uh, if they can just do it, if they can do it one more time and they have shown the ability to just repeat that performance, I'm talking about Morocco. Yeah, then not. Then, yeah. uh, then I think at that point, it doesn't matter who's a favorite because they have shown that they simply do not care and they can and will beat everybody. And I think it's important to finish with this point. Morocco and Croatia, their squads are not as strong and as deep as Argentina and France. So there are some injury issues cropping up, maybe tiredness. And France and Argentina have that luxury where they can probably roll in if he doesn't start Lautaro Martinez from the bench. And France have, you know so many incredible attackers that they can look to as well in those situations. So, yeah, um, probably given that this has been the Chaos World Cup, uh, it'll probably be a Croatia <laughs> against Morocco final, right? Uh, that's uh, that's yeah, what we'll probably know, see. But... All four of these teams are going to play two more games, and I'm excited to see all four of them play two more games. Like, how often is that the case when you get to the semifinals? There's always a team you can do without or a team that you want to get eliminated. All four of these are awesome stories. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true. We'll keep you updated with all those awesome stories over at Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com. How to watch information, preview, team news, analysis and reaction before, during and after all these big semifinals. Head over to PST. We'll have you covered. And we really are getting into the business end of this competition now, gents. And uh, cannot wait. Cannot wait for what this next week holds uh, for those four nations.